Today I'm going to talk about the new album by Derek Sherinian called Vortex. It was released on July 1st, 2022. Now you often hear about solo albums from singers and guitarists, but every so often a keyboardist released a solo album. Derek Sherinian has been called the Eddie Van Halen of keyboard players. He played with Dream Theater, Son of Apollo, and Alice Cooper, and I actually have a few of his uh, albums that I didn't know I did. But for example, uh, Alice Cooper's The Last Temptation, so he played keyboards on this and did some vocals. And he was also a member of this album, uh, Sons of Apollo. So he has been on you know, many different projects, but somebody who you, know, you don't really like, hear about that often. So anyway, he released nine solo albums with lots of famous guitarists. Uh, he had it like Slash, Yngwie Malmsteen, and now this new album is called Vortex. So this is his ninth solo album. This covers a variety of styles. There's progressive rock, there's some metal, and lots of like jazz and fusion. So if you like instrumental music and prog, you would uh, like, this mu like this album. So let me uh, talk about the songs now. So the first song is called The Vortex. This has some uh, futuristic keyboards and uh, traditional metal sound. And the guitar melody reminded me a lot of like Joe Satriani. So the song is a fast pace. Uh, Derek plays some cool keyboard melodies. The tone of the song is upbeat. It's happy. It's very complex. Has progressive rock keyboard rhythms. And around the middle of the song, there are some like haunting uh, keyboard melodies and lots of guitar shredding. And there's five horses. Uh, this one has Noodle Betancourt from Extreme. Now, if you are a fan of uh, that band Extreme, you instantly recognize his signature guitar playing. The song has elements of progressive rock and has lots of melody. And the songs for fans of guitar shredding has some of that like deep purple style, like keyboard melodies. The song is basically a shred fest. Um, you hear some bass mixed in as well. It gets a little funky uh, towards the end of the song, but it one's good. It mixes a lot of different styles. Then there is Scorpion, a jazz song. This one kind of evokes the feeling of being like in a lounge, like drinking a martini. It's just complex, has like a standard piano sound in the forefront and a, like a funky a drum beat. The bass guitar seems to be doing its own thing and um, there are like a few solo sections with the bass. So if you like jazz, uh, this is for you. Then Seven Seas with Steve Stevens. The song is like a jazzy psychedelic space trip with some touches of me metal guitar. It has the prog metal sound of like Dream Theater, but also sounds like they're almost like playing out of key, but they're really not. Like you have to listen to it to understand what I'm trying to say. But the song has like lots of twists and turns and different layers of sound. It's futuristic, it's proggy. You feel like you're on like a jazzy space trip. The song is called Seven Seas, and that's probably because like there's different like waves of sound going up and down, and these splashes of heavy riffs and proggy keyboard melodies. And the song is six minutes long, but it's just very complex and dense. Keyline Blues has Joe Bonamassa and Steve Lukather. They are two well-known uh, guitarists. Uh, Joe is a blues player, and Steve played in rock bands like Toto. The song's upbeat, has a happy tone. Style reminds me again of like Joe Satriani. They incorporate some like, jazzy soundscapes and smooth guitar leads. Derek plays some keyboard riffs, um, you know, some in like this piano tone, but the melody is catchy and it is repetitive enough to stick in your head. Die Cobra. This one has the awesome pairing of Michael Schenker and Zach Wilde. So you know it's going to be heavy. Starts with like a Middle Eastern riff and like the rhythm is just fast paced heavy metal. The keyboards carry the tune well and it kind of give a lot of sound and a thick tone. There's some atmospheric melodies here, lots of emotion in the song. You hear some orchestration and some heavy riffs. Remind me a lot of some of those like heavier songs by Dream Theater. Has that type of sound, lots of futuristic keyboards, distorted guitars, and it's for fans of progressive metal. Then there's Nomad's Land with Mike Stern, a well-known jazz guitarist. Very different type of song. It's a progressive jazz fusion. Has a very like odd time signature. It's just very unique, but at the same time, very melodic. The keyboards are the star of the song. The bass guitar plays some funky rhythms and the keyboard solos are really just out of this world. Very futuristic sounding. The song has some smooth jazz guitar solos and it's complex and shows off top notch musicianship from those playing the song. The final song is called uh, Aurora Australis. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it has the guitarist Bumblefoot. 
and he played with uh, Guns N' Roses, and uh, he's actually also on this album, Sons of Apollo. It's a long song, over 11 minutes, very jazzy, progressive, a lot going on here, lots of different sections in the song. It's like mostly laid back, but it does get heavy at one point in the song. Lots of technical riffing. Another song has like a Dream Theater-esque type of sound. It's proggy, it's complex. You hear complex keyboard melodies and futuristic sounding textures. The song takes many twists and turns. I really like the part around eight minutes. It's very classic prog. It sounds more like a Hammond organ type of sound. Then with some spacey guitar melodies and has some cool guitar shredding at this point. So in conclusion, it's the type of album that's geared towards musicians. I think if you're looking for catchy pop songs, it's not really an album for you, but it's an album for people who like complex, progressive rock music with some jazz, some metal, some other styles. If you like an album by instrumental artists, um, the one person who came to mind was like Joe Satriani and um, you know other musicians who kind of created instrumental albums. But if you like him, you know, you'll like this. It's just a really good album. It's not really an easy listening album. It's not really a pop album. And they're not really catchy songs. It's just, you know, some of the melodies are repetitive enough to be catchy, but songs are complex and you need to listen and pay attention to them. So, decent album. My score will be an 8 out of 10. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Thanks for watching. And my next video will be uh, iRobot by the Alan Parsons Project. So, please remember, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.